just that sort of relationship if someone comes with a very low ferritin i mean i've been keeping traditionally you know females at 60 to 80 in their levels my levels are about 65 70 in terms of ferritin i'm, I'm learning a lot here and, and that's the honest truth and and that's to stay curious you know and someone like uh, leland stillman who put me on mm -hmm. to you listen to joe mccola as i've said but Let's look at ferritin levels, especially in females, um, you know, once they're menstruating, some of them are very, very low and they feel much better when they get iron. That's anecdotally, but there's probably another reason that you can explain mm -hmm. to us. So give us that sort of like rundown. So, so we've been talking for 35 minutes. Uh, every second of every day, we have to replace two and a half million red blood cells. So 35 times 60 times two and a half million. Yeah. It's a big number. And it's in the course of 24 hours, Steve, it's 2 trillion red blood cells that need to be replaced. Big number every day. Huge. Now, what, what may surprise you is that it, typical adult is supposed to have about 5,000 milligrams of iron. Women might have a little less. Men might have a little bit more, but let's let's choose five thousand as a round number to support replacing two trillion red blood cells. You need twenty five milligrams of iron. That's 0.5 of a percent of a hundredth of a percent of the the total that we carry. Wow! Now here's what will that might surprise you. What will shock you? <laughs> is that 24 of those 25 milligrams come from what's called a recycling program. Technically, it's called the reticuloendothelial system. It took me two years to figure out that that meant recycle. Uh, very, very well obscured in the, in the literature. And so um, 24 of 25 milligrams coming from a recycling, got to have the copper dormin, the, the erythro, or excuse me, the ferroport and doorway opens in the presence of the ferrooxidase enzyme, one of the most important enzymes in planet Earth. And it comes by way of either ceruloplasmin, which we talked about before, or its cousin called aphestin. And there's a third cousin called zyclopen that you've probably never heard of. And that's yes. very important in the placenta. And it turns out that all three of these ferrooxidases expressed in the placenta Wow. Three most important multi-copper oxidases on planet Earth. They're all expressing in the placenta, and the doctor never measures copper. Fascinating. So um, the, the issue is getting people to realize that it's copper running the show. You cannot make heme. You cannot make hemoglobin. And you cannot make red blood cells without copper. Not my idea. I think Bruce Ames wrote a very important article in 2005. Um, again, at, at his peak, he was a, he's still still alive. He was a very prestigious uh, professor at UCLA, oh, excuse me, uh, UC Berkeley. And at, at the peak of his career, he was the most quoted scientist on planet Earth. Wow. So when, so when Bruce Ames says, you know, you can't, you can't do this iron thing without copper, it's like, maybe we should listen to that. No, that, that was E.F. Hutton speaking. Hmm. And so... That's not taught in doctor school. Doctors are taught, you are anemic, you are copper toxic, and never the train shall meet. And when I'm presented with, it's the bookends of ferritin that'll kill you, right? And so um, what got me on this journey, particularly around iron, was my wife, who just who just left to go run an errand. Um, this was back in 2016. She said, you know, you're talking to a lot of your clients about their blood work. Have you done yours yet? I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. So I ran out and did my blood work. I wanted to find out that my ferritin was 237. Wow. And yeah, wow. And and then I went to, to donate blood, and my hemoglobin was 18.2. Good thing I was wearing brown pants that day. Wow. Because the, the phlebotomist said, you know two more clicks and we couldn't do the donation. And that's what really got me started to um, understand this. Long, 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 long story short, uric acid increases things like ferritin 
and hemoglobin and other blood markers, but maybe that's in a future conversation. Yeah, sure. But the thing is, the low ferritin is another head fake, Steve. So I like to see ferritin between 20 and 50, closer to 20. And what really owned my understanding of this issue was I had a conversation with Douglas Kell, who's a world-renowned iron biologist at the University of Manchester. This goes back four years ago. We were doing a Skype call. And a very affable guy, about my age, wall of books behind him. I mean, the guy's just brilliant. And I said, Dr. Kell, I, I, I really want to know what's the ideal ferritin for a human being? <laughs> he goes, zero? I went, excuse me? <laughs> And he said, he said, Morley, rising ferritin in the blood is not a sign of iron vitality. It is a sign of organ pathophysiology. Sure. Said, do you understand what I just said? I said, yes, sir, I do. So what's been a conundrum for me for easily six years was the low ferritin. Because that because people come back and say, Oh, I feel better, you know. Well, the low ferritin relates to the spleen, the high ferritin relates to the liver. So high ferritin is a copper deficiency in the liver. Low ferritin is copper deficiency in the spleen. And so it's a very different world out there when you know that. And um, a very important study was done in, in 1978 by Robert Hodges. It was a three and a half year study working with iron and retinol and beta carotene because he really wanted to see with human subjects what happens. And to your point, uh, they, they were withholding vitamin A and uh, retinol, uh, beta carotene from their diet and the hemoglobin just started to collapse. I mean, it went down really, really low. And then there's, there's a point in time where they gave clinical iron and, the, and as you would have expected, the hemoglobin spiked up. And for six weeks, it was up and then it comes back down. And then they did something that no one had ever done before. This is 1978, Robert Hodges, uh, he feeds them vitamin A. And the hemoglobin takes off like a rocket. 